So a quick update on the radio install. As you know, my little videos are warts and all. So I tell you what's going right and what's going wrong. Uh, you will recall that I am setting myself a challenge of fitting a radio from a scrap car into a commercial SZ4 Jimny to bring it up to SZ5 spec. Yes, I know I can go and buy an aftermarket radio and fit it straight in, but then I would be tackling issues such as the uh, electronics not integrating with the vehicle electronics, you know, the controls on the steering and that kind of thing. I know you can get adapter cables for that, but there's reports that are not all working properly, and generally people are fiddling about trying to get the electronics working on a lot of vehicles. So I've gone with the SZ4, SZ5 radio way, where of course I know the electronics work because uh, it's the same radio that I'm fitting that is fitted to the car normally in the higher spec. So I know that bit's going to work. What I do also know though is that physically I'm going to have problems. The reason for this is, is that there are no gymnies in scrapyards. There are no 20, 18, 19, 20 gymnies in scrapyards. Therefore getting hold of this radio with the correct mounting bezels and all of that with it is virtually impossible. Yes, I can go and buy one, two, you know, just over £2,000 from Suzuki. Uh, of course, I'm not paying to, uh, just over £2,000 for a what is a fairly standard radio. But the Swifts, the Ignises and the Vitaras all have the same radio, but in a different bezel. So I've decided to get hold of one, take it all apart and see if I can make it fit. So, progress so far. Let's just switch the video. So, here it is, it's fitted in with an aftermarket bezel uh, that you can see here. Now, this bezel is designed to fit in the Jimny and it is designed to take DIN2 radios, but you can see here there is a gap at the top of the screen. Um, this is because this distance here is nearly a centimetre shorter than the same bezel in the SZ5. Now you can't buy the bezel from Suzuki, you, it's joined to the radio so that's not a goer. So I still have some work to do and I suspect it's either going to be putting a little bit of high gloss infill into this bit here or drilling the brackets inside of about a centimetre below so that the radio just comes up a bit into the fitting point. Anyway, as you can see, it's all there, it's all working. Uh, and uh, getting the touch screen working has been a bit of a challenge because of the way it actually works. It's uh, because it's uh, part of the bezel in the car, the, the screen itself is part of the bezel, getting it to actually work and act as a touch screen is uh, actually quite difficult to get it all lined up and nice and stable like it is here. Okay, and as you can see, it's all running. Uh, in my full video, I'm going to tell you how to get all the sat nav going and that on it, like it is at the moment. And it will run the smartphone on the smart link if I wanted to, although at the moment I've got it actually connected on uh, a media server uh, for. Um, there are an iPod that's all running as well and things like the volume and all of that is uh, working there equally all of the uh, controls on the screen on the steering wheel are working so here I am just flicking through the different modes from the steering wheel and that's all working as you can see So, and also the um, Bluetooth style other controls on the steering wheel, the, the core controls are working. So, if I press that, command. I get the commands and all that working there. Ending speech recognition. So, that's the, dis the, the progress so far. As I say, a bit more work here now. Um, and then um, I think it would just about be there. So uh, I'll produce a full video with all the description of how this has been done and that, but I think obviously, warts and all, I've got to cure this somehow at the, at the, at a, uh, to get it to be a nice proper install.